Thank you, General, for yielding. Dr. Holt. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I uh, thank the witnesses. Um, uh, Ms. Horvitz, uh, do you agree that there are instances of those things that you want to prevent, instances of employment discrimination based on sex, based on disability, based on returning veteran status, and so forth? I suppose there are probably are some instances out are. there. Okay. Um, Ms. Norris, um, or I mean, Mr. Norris, you said uh, at one point, uh, kind of my paraphrase, what you're really asking is to let companies do their work or leave them to their own devices to solve these problems. Is, uh, how would you rephrase what I just said? That, uh, that is partially correct. Okay. What I'm saying is that the enforcement agency has responsibilities to enforce the laws that it administers. It has to provide standards by which it is going to do that, legally, statistically defensible standards. And once those standards are issued, then contractors have an obligation to try to exercise good faith efforts to try and accomplish those, those obligations. We are not saying that there should not be any oversight of a company's affirmative action and non-discrimination requirements. What we are saying is that those are actually shared goals that federal contractors and OFCCP have and the contractor community and the OFCCP should be working together to devise methods by which they can accomplish that objective of matching people with jobs. So, so Ms. Bottenfield, I think I heard you say, uh, not a, I won't go back to read the record, uh, have the record read, but it was essentially, if we do a good job in outreach, if you have some sort of outreach program for science, STEM education or whatever, or if CCP would then say, but what about this instance of discrimination? Yes. Uh, I, 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 yes, that's, that's, that's the I, analysis okay. that's considered, call, it's called adverse. Now, I'm effect. sure St. Jude's Hospital is very well intentioned, uh, but don't you think there are institutions where there are indeed discri uh, instances of discrimination? I'm sure there are. Well, you know, I'm trying to get a sense of just how widespread this is. I mean, we hear, for example, that women, uh, are earning uh, 77 cents on the dollar uh, compared, to, uh, uh, compared to men. We have some state breakdowns of median earnings for full-time year-round workers by sex and state. And, you know, it's, it, I see the lowest here appears to be Wyoming at 63.8 percent. Uh, the highest is the District of Columbia at 91.4 percent. You know, I, uh, it would be really good if we had good, really good data about how much discrimination there is. Miss um, Goss Graves, is there anything different about the District of Columbia? Why that number might be higher? You know, it, it's hard to say. Part of it could be uh, the role of the federal government as an employer. Yeah, let me in offer the that as a suggestion. Uh, the contractors here. Uh, and the employers here in, uh, are, are more the federal government than they are in North Dakota, Wyoming, the other states where women evidently are not doing quite so well. So, I, you know, I, I understand my colleague Mr. Tierney's frustration with holding this hearing prematurely. I would argue a little differently that I think it's not that the hearing is premature, but the witness's testimony is directed toward the wrong thing. It shouldn't be, how can we get the government out of our hair? But it should be directed toward, what do we need to understand? How will we get the data that we need? What record keeping must be done so that we have the data? So that we can deal with what are very real problems and actually solve those problems. There is very real discrimination out there. And relying on the good faith of good employers, evidently looking over decades of data, is not good enough. It requires record keeping. Otherwise, we won't know what's going on. We won't know 
how bad the problem is or how we're going to solve it. That is the, the role that we have given to the OFCCP. And I hope that that will be the focus of this and any future hearings. Thank you.